Apple just launched a brand new app with iOS 26, and it's one that many Mac users will instantly recognize, Preview. It's designed to handle PDFs and images just like its Mac counterpart, but now on iPhone and iPad. The thing is, while it sounds like a great idea, after spending some time with it and reading what other users are saying, I have to be honest, it's just not there yet. A lot of people are even questioning whether it's worth using right now. In this video, I'll show you exactly how Preview works, what it can do, where it falls short, and what Apple needs to fix before it becomes a must-have app on iOS. If you've ever used a Mac, you already know Preview. It's a built-in utility for viewing and editing PDFs and images, signing documents, annotating pages, cropping photos, all without a need of a third-party application. With iOS 26, Apple is trying to bring that same experience to iPhone and iPad, which I do appreciate. The goal seems to be creating a single central place where you can view, mark up, and manage documents without bouncing between files, notes, or other applications. And now, when you tap a PDF or image in the Files app, it opens directly in Preview by default. So, what exactly can Preview do on iOS? Here's a quick overview. You can view PDFs and images in a simple, distraction-free interface. You can also annotate documents with a familiar markup tools like draw, highlight, add text, or insert shapes. You can also sign documents digitally, and if you already have a saved signature on your Mac, it will absolutely show up on your iPhone and iPad. You can also fill out PDF forms using basic autofill support for text fields, scan documents directly into PDFs using your device's camera, and rotate or resize images quickly without needing another application. All of this is useful, and if you weren't already using markup or files for these tasks, having everything in one dedicated application is very convenient. But here's the thing, almost all of these features already existed elsewhere on iOS, and that's where the problems start to appear. Again, after using Preview for a while and seeing what other users are saying, it's clear that the app's still far from perfect. Here are the biggest drawbacks people are talking about. It's noticeably slower than Quick Look. The old viewer built into files was fast and very seamless. Now, tapping a document pulls you completely out of files and into the preview app. There's no simple back button, so switching between documents means constantly jumping back and forth between two applications, which is a huge step backward in workflow. The navigation also feels clunky and very limited. You can't swipe between images in the same folder anymore. Previously, you could open a photo in the Files app and swipe left or right through the rest of the photos in that same path. Now you can't do that anymore. If you open one image, it'll open up in the preview app and swiping right or left really doesn't do anything. The interface also feels very unfinished. Basic tools like Rotate are awkwardly split across menus and the UI lacks the polish we usually expect from Apple. Some users on Reddit are even saying it even feels inconsistent with the rest of iOS, which I cannot agree. Especially the home screen, I don't really like the start page of the preview app at all. It feels very cluttered and not really very useful. In general, it adds more confusion than clarity. You can now scan documents in notes, files, and preview, which feels kind of redundant. I do appreciate the flexibility, but I wish it was just clearer to know exactly where to go if I want to scan a document. Right now, preview doesn't feel like it's solving a new problem. And in some cases, it even introduces new ones. It's not useless completely, but it clearly needs more work before it can become truly valuable. However, not all hope is lost. While we wait for Apple to refine the application, here are a few ways to make the experience better today. You can try going back to Quick Look instead. If you long press a file in the Files app, you can choose Quick Look and you can preview it right there without leaving the application. Do this for your main file types like PDFs, JPEGs, and PNGs, and you'll basically get the same behavior we've had before this update. And if you still want to use the preview app, of course, you can always open it separately and access your documents from there. For reading long PDFs, I recommend sending them to the books application. If you're reading longer PDFs and really need that start where you left off feature, you can actually send the file to the books app. It does remember your last page viewed, so it's a great workaround until Apple adds this functionality to the preview app. Or if you prefer, you can remove the preview app completely. If the new workflow is slowing you down, just simply uninstall preview and go back to the way things worked before. 
It's not a perfect solution and it might change how some files open, but for now, it's a simple way to avoid the extra friction. So that's the new preview app in iOS 26, how it works, where it struggles, and how you can work around its current limitations. Right now, it feels more like a first draft than a finished product. It's slower, clunkier, and missing many of the features that makes preview so powerful on Mac OS. That said, there's real potential here. Having a dedicated built-in app for PDFs and images could eventually simplify workflows. The markup tools are still excellent, digital signatures work well across devices, and scanning documents directly into PDFs is genuinely useful. If Apple builds on this foundation, improves the navigation, adds the missing features, and polishes the UI, Preview could become an essential part of iOS. But for now, it's just not there yet. It's functional, but it feels more like an early version of something that could become great. Whether you decide to use it now or wait for future updates will depend on your workflow, but there's definitely potential here. What about you? Have you tried the new preview app yet? Are you using it or do you think it's unnecessary right now? Let me know in the comments below. And if this helped you decide, don't forget to subscribe for more deep dives into Apple's built-in applications. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next video.